All right, so the first question somebody asked is, they've had two ACL tears. Is it safe to go back to playing football? And I'm guessing by football, they mean at least in the US soccer. Um, anything is possible. What's up, Evan? Uh, it, it, it definitely is possible to go back. I think at the end of the day, making sure that you are properly prepared to go back is important. Um, no one should be guessing about when you're ready to go back. It shouldn't be, you know, you are six months or nine months post-op and you're ready to go back. Uh, you need to make sure you are properly being tested. That includes hop test, strength testing, and psychological testing. Those are some of the big ones. Um, so I think making sure you are adequately being tested is extremely important um, before you go back. Uh, one of the, one of my cliche sayings is that you want you you want to test. You don't want to guess. So making sure you're you're doing all these things before you go back into play, and even when you do go back, making sure that you are eased back into it. I think a lot of people just get to a certain point and they're like, I'm going back into sports, and they go all the way back right away. Um, but making sure that when you go to practices, you're starting with non-contact and then, you know, starting at maybe half a practice and you kind of gradually work your way up. And even during games, you maybe play 25% of the game and then 50% and then, you know, again, gradually increasing that. Um, I think if you do all these things, you will greatly improve your chances of not suffering a second tear. Um, not that anyone can ever promise anything, but I think that gives you the best chance to succeed. Um, I'm going to start rolling through some of these questions. All right, here's one that's not really ACL related, but um, advice for for not getting the PT school the first time around, um, I think it's okay. You know, it, it, it definitely does happen. Um, I would encourage you to, you know, maybe if there's uh, some grades that maybe weren't as as good as you could have done, maybe retaking those classes is, is potentially and getting your uh, shadowing hours up, um, maybe calling the school and asking them why they um, didn't accept you the first time. Uh, I think those are some of, the, some of the big things and maybe applying to more schools. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but I actually applied to 18 schools my first year because I didn't want to um, be rejected. So I applied to 18 schools. I got into four of them and I picked one and I, I went to that one. Um, so I think sometimes people will only apply to, you know, like five, six schools, but I think potentially increasing that um, can maybe help uh, increase your chances of, of going, getting into a school. Um, Let's see. All right, there's a lot of questions. Sorry, I'm trying to work through these right now. All right, so how often do you use strength measurements with handheld diamond overs or isokinetic machines? Um, so I personally don't really start that till maybe like the six month time frame. I think some people get into that a little bit too early. And that includes doing other some other some of the other stuff like the hop tests. Um, I know there's some research out there that wants you to be like a seventy percent hop distance before you get back into jogging. Um, I just personally don't want someone trying to hop their max distance at three months post op because that's ballpark about when people are um, going back into jogging. So you know, I I, I think that I don't really start until six months because at the end of the day, even anything before six months, you know that they are not ready to go back yet. Um, so I, I think at six months, it gives you some, some data and maybe I'll retest every four to six weeks. Um, just, you know, it, at the end of the day, all this testing should give you information about how to change your programming. You know, if their quads are a little bit weaker and their hamstrings are maybe a little bit, a little bit more progressed, then maybe you have to increase your quad dosage and decrease your hamstring dosage. Um, so at the end of the day, the tests are extremely important, especially in that late stage when you're really getting to that progressive loading phase and getting going into the heavy lifting. Um, so I think that's that's where my opinion is in regards to the the te the testing. Um, all right. Do you keep following these questions? All right. How can I deal with pain after five weeks post stop? Um, so pain that early is is reasonable. Um, I would say your physio or PT should be trying to adjust things accordingly. Um, if you're in intense pain, it might be one of the things where you go back and talk to the doctor or the exercises themselves should not be increasing your pain substantially. Um, I'm a pretty big advocate for finding exercises that are beneficial but don't cause pain. Um, so that's that's at least my thoughts when it comes to it. I always want people when they're doing you know range of motion stuff that 
you know, it's, it's relatively pain free. Uh, that's where that's what I would be doing. So, you know, seeing if your physio or PT is willing to adjust things and um, and go and go from there. All right. Let's see. Sorry, there's a lot of these guys. Oh, I gotta get my boy on heaven. Uh, great question here. So how important is compliance from home exercise programs for patients? Uh, this is a very good question. I think at the, at the end of the day, it comes down to how frequently you're going to physical therapy. Um, if you're going once a week and because that's logistically all you can do, then your home exercise program is extremely important. But if you're in, in the late stage of rehab, and I'm talking more so the late stage right now, and let's say you're in the late stage and you can come in three times a week, then your home exercise program is not as important because if you're in PT, let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you should be being adequately loaded and being challenged. So the other days of the week you're, you're doing, um, you're, you're getting mostly rest work and maybe going outside and going for a jog and things like that. Um, so I, I, I think that it definitely depends on the time frame and also uh, where, how many times you're able to go to rehab. But in the early phase of rehab, let's say you're you know within the first four to six weeks post-op, compliance is extremely important. I will tell people to do the range of motions a lot throughout the day. Um, it shouldn't be just you know once or twice throughout the day doing your extension and flexion. Uh, it should be that you are doing it like a lot throughout the day. I'm talking five, six, seven, eight times. Just spread them out throughout the day and just keep moving that thing. Um, and also squeezing your quads hundreds of times a day. I think these are some of the subtle things in the early phases that aren't done well enough. Um, so I, I, I definitely think compliance is, is extremely important in the overall um, progress of an ACL. All right. Let's see. Working my way through these. All right. 12 weeks post-op quad graft um, and can't kneel all the way and it hurts. Um, so yes, kneeling on it can be uh, painful sometimes. I would say it's even more common with uh, patella tendon grafts, uh, quad tendon grafts. I haven't seen too many people have issues with kneeling, but it definitely is possible, especially if you do have some um, some swelling in between. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm swelling in your knee. Um, so if you do have some swelling, make sure you try and elevate that thing and get that thing up. And um, if it is extremely painful, then it might be something you want to talk to your, uh, your physio or PT about. Um, at the end of the day, it is aggressive to kneel on the knee. It might be something you just have to gradually expose yourself to. You know, maybe you start in a different position and kind of slowly lower your weight onto your knee as opposed to going straight kneeling onto your knee. Um, at, at, at 12 weeks, your knee is still not obviously not fully healed yet. So it definitely takes some time. Um, so I think it's, it's normal, but it should start to decrease over time. All right, let's see. Still working my way through these questions, guys. Um, let's see. All right, here's a question. Um, she wrote, I am scared to return to sports after almost six months post-surgery from ACL. Is that normal? Yes, 100% normal. I don't think anyone should return to sports when they're six months post-op. Um, I think that's way too early for anyone to do that. I think if there's someone that's suggesting that you go back at six months, that means that they are not in the research. Um, a lot of the research supports the fact that you should be waiting nine months minimum and if you're a younger athlete, let's say in high school, they should be trying to push that closer to you know 11 to 12 months. Um, I think six months is way too early. You just have too much to work on. You're still, symmetry-wise, not gonna be there as far as strength goes. Um, you should still be consistently strength training at six months. Um, and I think that if you're not mentally ready to go back, that means that you are not ready to play sports quite yet. Um, there's a lot of research that supports the fact that you should be both mentally and physically ready to go back. Um, so making sure you're checking off all of these boxes before you go back into play is important. All right. All right, guys, if you have questions, try and submit them to the, to the, um, um, in the question box at the bottom. 
let's see. Um, okay, so are there risk factors having to wait for ACL surgery due to the current situation? Um, the only risk factor is if you have a meniscus tear um, or if your knee buckles on you consistently. I would say those are the two biggest things. Um, I've had a couple of people who are still waiting for surgery and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's definitely a tricky time given current circumstances because a lot of places aren't doing elective surgeries. Um, so if you're in that situation, just try and do your best to protect yourself. Uh, don't put yourself into situations where you might twist or you might turn or anything like that. Um, or any positions that you might feel like your knee will buckle on you. So that's number one priority. Secondly, I would make sure you're doing everything you can to improve your strength. You can still be doing strengthening exercises as long as it's obviously safe. Um, hopefully you have the guidance of a PT um, or physio that can help you understand what exercises that are safe to do so you can continue still building your quad strength, your hamstring strength, your glute strength before surgery because all that is going to help you after. Um, so hopefully that helps you answer your question. All right, I'm gonna get through a couple more of these. I'm gonna try and do these once a week on Sundays. So if you guys wanna keep tuning in, um, you know, I'll do my best to try and get through as many questions as I can. Let me focus on one year post up. All right, so anything to focus on one year post up. Um, yeah, there's always things that you can be doing, even even if you're one year out. I think continue strengthening should always be the thing. I'm going to talk about that many many times. I think if the, the stronger you are, the better your, your the better chance your body can handle the demands of sports. So that is the number one priority. I think continue to work on neuromuscular training, which is you know single leg landing, plyometrics, things like that, to teach your body how to control yourself is extremely important. I would say those two are probably the two biggest things that should be part of your programming if you're about a one about one year out from surgery. All right, still. Sorry guys, there's a lot of questions that I'm working towards looking through. All right, here we go. Um, Pre-surgical rehab recommendations. Uh, I, I kind of just talked about this. Um, at the end of the day, before surgery, you're trying to get your knee to calm down, uh, which means that you want to get the swelling out of there. So you should be elevating pretty frequently. Uh, you should also be trying to get your quads kind of activated and strong again. Um, and also trying to get your range of motion back. A lot of stuff you're doing prehab are the same stuff you'll be doing immediately after surgery. Um, I, I think that these are very underemphasized things sometimes. Some, some doctors will really push for prehab and some doctors will, won't push for prehab at all. Um, but in my experience, the people that do prehab have a significantly better turnout after surgery. Um, even most recently, I had an athlete who uh, we did about a month of rehab, a month of prehab, I'm sorry, and she had surgery and she texted me the, the, that day after I was asking how she was doing and she said that she was able to do a straight leg raise with her brace on. Um, and I think it came down to the fact that she was, she was strong because of um, all the work that she did prehab. So yeah, those are the big things. Um, get, the, get, get the leg strong again, get the hip strong again, get the knee moving both directions, flexion and extension, and also get the swelling out of there is the, the big things pre-op. Um, if you're interested, I actually do have a, a pre-op and immediate post-op program. Um, the link is in my bio. It should be, if it's not, I'll put it in there um, after I hop off this. And if, you, if you're interested, you can look in that as well. All right. Let's see. A lot of questions. Sorry, working my way through. I'll find one. There's a shoulder question. Oh, I'll take this one. Okay. Have, have I heard of the Melbourne ACL Rehab Guide? If so, do you utilize it? Um, 
so yes, I have, I know it's made by Mick Hughes who does a lot of ACO rehab. Um, I respect Mick Hughes a lot. I think he, he's a big advocate for um, the whole ACO rehab community and he's done a lot of great work and he puts a lot of great content out there uh, that, that I learned from also. Um, I actually really do like his protocol because it is criterion based as opposed to time based. Um, I'm actually kind of in the middle of writing a blog post about just the fact that um, return to sport is an earned process. It's not something that should be given to you based on some obscure timeline. I think a lot of these time-based time based protocols say that, you know, at six months or nine months, you are ready to return back to sport and that should never be the case. Um, and I think that's why I really like Mick Hughes' protocol because it talks about how it's a gradual step for every single person and for every single ACL, like your, it's your own journey for, for your rehab. So your progress is not gonna be the same as someone who's who had surgery the same day as you. You're gonna progress differently. Rehab should be different for you guys. Um, so that I, I do definitely like his, his protocol. All right. We will go maybe two or three more. Then we'll... Uh, all right. At what time do you realize the knee is ready to run a little bit? Okay, so that's kind of relates back to the question that I just answered where, you know, it's it should be, it's not something where someone can tell you, oh, at 12 weeks, you should be jogging. I think that's a very common timeline that people are given. Um, it's something that you need to earn the right to do. Um, so I actually just posted about that today about one of the big things that um, I work on before surgery is teaching the, teaching the knee and the quads how to absorb force. I think that's something that's not really worked on enough. I think a lot of times it's just certain exercises or you get to you know 12 weeks and you're start you're clear to jog. Um, I think strength is important um, also for for jogging. Uh, so strength and teaching force absorption are two of the bigger components when it comes to uh, to, to running. And I also think people are too eager to run, uh, which ends up causing potentially kind of knee pain when they're at that you know 15, 16 month, uh, six, 15, 16 week time frame because once they start jogging, they kind of go crazy and start jogging a lot. Um, a lot of times when people, they, they pass all my strength tests and they look good for jogging, I will make sure they are structured in what they're doing. So I might start with something where it's 10 seconds on of jogging and then you're walking for 10 seconds and we'll do that for, you know, maybe 12 rounds. If we go over 12 rounds, that's only two minutes of total jogging. Um, that's usually how I handle it. And then they monitor their, pro they monitor their symptoms the next day. If their knee feels good, no swelling or anything like that, then you can think about increasing that. Um, I think every step of the way it needs to be structured and that includes uh, running. All right. Like this, this is random. Uh, who runs my social media account? I do. Um, I've been doing it since the beginning. Uh, I've been very thankful for just what that's what what this is, has been able to grow into. It's not something that I ever anticipated at all, and I'm definitely very thankful for all you guys who choose to follow me. Um, but yeah, I I handle all of it myself. All right. Let's see. I will take two more, and then I call it a day. All right. Okay. Will I be as fast after ACL surgery? You play soccer, so I'm gonna I'm gonna answer this in a general question in regards to all athletes and all sports. Uh, the answer is yes. It is possible for you to get back to the exact same level that you're that you're at prior, but that means finding the right physio or therapist is extremely important. Someone who understands. Um, every detail, every nuance of AC rehab is so important. Um, when you go back, you should be strong enough. You should be mentally, mentally there as well. Um, every box should be checked off. I can't really emphasize that, emphasize that enough. Um, I've, I've been fortunate enough to help a lot of my athletes get back and a lot of them feel great. Um, a lot of them have been able to play at the same level that they were playing at prior. Um, some even, even to an even better level just because they, they're in a regular strength training program for potentially the first time in their lives. Um, so yes, I, I definitely do think it is possible for you to get back to the same level that you were at before. All right. 
Let's see. I'm gonna look for one last question that I like and we'll call it a day. Well, there's a lot of questions, guys. Um, Sorry, there's literally like 60 questions here that I'm trying to read through at this point. I'm gonna find one more. Gotta make it a good one. Okay, here's one. All right, so. When you're sitting for a long period of time, you're 12 weeks post-top. Uh, when you get up, uh, you feel like you need to limp. Um, so I, I think an, another thing is a lot of people ask me the question about what's normal and what's not normal. And I really try to stay away from those words just because I don't, I never want anyone to feel like you're abnormal just because, you know, something is bothering you during, you know, your, your recovery. Um, some stiffness and things like that is still, it's not extremely uncommon for people who are 12 weeks. Um, I think consistent moving is important. Um... But yes, I, I would say that it's, it's not something that's impossible. It, it's definitely something that I have experienced myself with my own knee and also some of my patients were reported as well. Um, just try and keep it moving. If it really is a big problem, I would make sure you bring it up to your, your therapist or your physio um, and ask them like why this is still happening. Um, yeah, that's at least what, what I would be doing for, for your situation. All right, let's take one more. A lot of questions. Let's see. All right, here we go. This is a good one. All right, so can't see the whole question, but he's nine weeks post up, and you can straighten your knee, but you cannot hyper extend like the other side. So this is something that I would argue is one of uh, the most important things when it comes to ACR rehab. Uh, I, I think that getting symmetrical extension is extremely important i think a lot of people will tell you that when you're at zero degrees which is flat means that you're good enough and i still to this day i still don't understand what that means good enough i never want anyone to tell me that my health is good enough um so i think getting that all the way back is extremely really important because that's going to affect how you run how you sprint um it's going to affect whether or not you can get back your your quad strength as well um, i just think that people who lack full extension it, it ends up causing problems later down the line, particularly when you get into, you know, the more aggressive type of movements like like box jumps, um, sprinting, cutting, all that kind of stuff. And especially when you get back into the more return to sports stuff. So I, I would definitely make sure you get back your, your full extension. And I would say the only rare situations, I've, I've had some particularly females who come in and they have like, you know, 10 degrees of hyperextension. Like maybe in that situation, we don't need to get, get that all the way back. But um, for the most part, for the majority of my population that I treat, yes, I definitely would get back full extension. Um, so yeah, that's, I, I, that's where I would go as far as, as far as, um, your situation. All right, guys, I definitely appreciate you guys coming on. Um, hope you guys found this helpful and, uh, I'm going to try and do it once a week or so on, on Sundays, roughly around this time. Um, I appreciate all you guys supporting me and, um, hope you guys found this helpful.